All right, welcome to my little video. Let's get rid of all this garbage at the bottom of the screen here. Um, so in this video, I'm going to show you how to make uh, a markbook or assessment sheet, whatever you want to call it, um, in Google Sheets. So I started this about, I don't know, six or seven years ago um, because I was teaching my kids how to use Google Sheets to make graphs and things like that. So I, I kind of started to learn some more um, things about it. I never used like Excel or whatever growing up, so I didn't really have any Excel skills. Um, but I started to learn them as I was teaching the kids. And then um, I'm also really bad at like just keeping track of things that are physical in nature. Um, and if you see my desk right now, you can probably see why. So having it in the in the uh, cloud was much better. You know, like for report cards and stuff like that, it's just easy to find this or I can open my phone or whatever. So for me, this was an obvious way to go. Um, and you know, every year I learn like uh, some new little bit of code that makes my life a little easier or whatever. Um, so here we go, let's do it. So we're going to go new sheet, make a Google sheet. Okay, we're going to start with, with just the basics here. We got nothing on the go. There's It's a blank sheet, okay? I mean, if you don't know anything about Google Sheets, it's all set up in cells, right? This is D4 and on and on and on, okay? So that, you know, that's how it works, the basics. And you got all your usual kind of stuff at the top here, okay? So, and my computer froze. The fuck? Nope, it's back. I didn't swear. It was close. So um, <laughs> we're going to set it up uh, with the basics here. So you're going to obviously start with, you know, like student name. Okay. And then you're going to, we're actually going to leave a couple of these blank for a second. We're going to leave three blank. Actually, you know what? I'm going to tell you what we're going to put in there. We're going to say compare it to A. And we're going to say, I'm just pushing enter after each time. So compare to B. So this doesn't quite work like the normal you know, word processes you're used to. Um, when you type in a cell, it types and you have to push enter to be done. And if you type over top of something, it just erases it. Okay, and there's ways to get around that, but for now, let's just keep it like that. Um, and then you're gonna have your, whatever it is you're marking, okay? And you know, I'm not gonna tell you how to mark. If you are marking with percentages or grade level, uh, you know, numbers um, or rubrics or whatever, that's fine with me. I like to tend to mark most of my things um, because I'm in an older grade. I do a lot of projects and I use checklists and then I convert the checklist to numbers basically in a met, not met, exceeds format. So if they meet my expectations, it's it's a one. If they exceed it or it's a bonus or something, it's a two. And if they don't do whatever it is I was trying to get them to do, then it's a zero. Okay. And that's the way I like to do it. If you mark with letters, then I would convert those to numbers somehow. Um, you know, like an A is is an eight or something, and then A plus is a nine. I don't know, like set up your own numbers. So there's obviously four, three, two, one. You can even just do it as simple as 1.5, you know, 3.5, whatever, okay? So you pick your own numbering system, and part of the way my mark is gonna work is it's actually not going to matter um, how you mark, as long as it's a number format, okay? You can't put A's and B's in here. You, you really do need it to be a number, okay? Uh, okay, the next one we're gonna have is, is gonna be called count, okay? And that's gonna count up the total marks, okay? And then here's where you're going to start putting in your tasks. I like to just leave a, a like a line that's a column here that's got you know black in it or whatever, um, just to sort of break up the sheet you know visually from for me a bit. Okay. The other thing I like to do is by the way, if you click on on like the E or the one, it's going to highlight the whole row or the whole column. Okay. So when I click on the one, it's done a whole column now, and I'm just going to set that with a a little bit of color. And I like to make mine uh, white. Or sorry, my text white here just to kind of stand out. Now that's like, you know, I'm going to put the kids down here. Okay, another good little quick trick here is this, if you grab this little gray bar, you see it changes to a hand. If you grab that gray bar and drag it down, that'll lock that cell in. So now as I scroll down and I've got 80 kids I'm marking, um, that, that one row is locked in. So I'm always know kind of what I'm looking at, which is a, a pro tip. The other good one is to, to grab this one also and lock in students so that if you have a really long unit, you know, this is like all your math units together or whatever, as you scroll to the right, you always know what student you're talking about, okay? Um, the other quick thing is down here, you got sheet one, okay? You, you might wanna rename that, like let's let's call this one math, all right? And then you can always make new ones. So once I've got my, my template set up, I can right click down here or just uh, left click the arrow and I could duplicate it and make my next, um, my next subject language or whatever. Okay. So it's great to start at the start of the year with this, or even like I'm finding, you know, since a lot of my tasks this year in grade seven are the same as my tasks last year, I'm just bringing over a whole sheet and just changing the kids' names. And then obviously the putting in the right marks. Okay. So here we got Baggins, Bilbo, Bagging, and we got 
Uh, Frodo, his twin brother. I know that's not canon, but okay, Frodo. We got uh, Frey. Okay, and then on and on and on, your class goes down here. Okay. Now the other thing I'm going to do, and this is just my own the way I've kind of adapted my mark book here, is I make two fake kids. Okay, and I do kid 100, and I do kid B. And these are, like I said, they're fake kids, and I'm going to give them marks as well. And kid 100 is going to be literally never makes a mistake, does every piece of bonus, gets everything perfect all the time. That's kid 100. Kid B is going to be just sort of the, the grade level kid, does all the stuff that's sort of B level, everything's okay, there's no major issues, but they sort of never really bump up or go beyond or do anything sort of ex you know, outside expectations or, or take bonus opportunities, whatever, okay? That's kid B. And as you might have started to guess, I'm going to compare my students versus these imaginary fake kids, okay? And you know, again, you don't have to do this. This is just something I've started to do. And I don't always, it's not like, you know, it's not my religion or anything. Like if I don't think those grades line up with what I want to give the kid, then I, I use my professional judgment. But I find it's very, it's a very good indicator. And also my kids that are in grade seven really like to see their um, sheets for certain units or whatever, and they want to see, you know, how they're doing in this sort of fictitious competition with these fake kids. Because and it really does motivate um, a lot of the kids to to see those numbers. So for me, it works. For you, do your own thing. Okay. So let's say I've got some task. Okay. I don't know. Let's say we're doing integers. So here I'm. I've checked to see if the kids could add integers. Oh, you know, since I added a plus symbol there, it's it wants to do math. Don't we all? Okay, and I'm checking to see if they could subtract integers on some task or whatever it is. Okay, and then um, what else are we doing here? Maybe I've got a problem solving question. Okay, and uh, let's do one more thing here. Now my numbers are gonna be weird because this is like gonna have four little tasks. Um, what else can we throw in there? Uh, I'll maybe ask for a model or something. Okay, oh, that looks pretty good. So now, um, again, I'm checking to see if these kids have done this thing. Okay, so Bilbo was was killing it, um, and maybe like for example, in real life, I did do. Uh, I had like an exit pass, and the kids had to add integers and subtract integers, and then if they showed a model, it was it was a two, right? And I tell the kids in advance this stuff; they get used to this real quick, right? So he did that for subtracting integers. It was just like you know, it was just the math. There was no sort of a, a, a model shown. Problem solving. Um, Let's give it a two. Let's say it was like a, a two-part question. They got a two there, and I don't, I don't know what model even means, but let's give them a one there. Okay, and then I do. So I keep marking the kids. So this this guy was all right, but the problem solving wasn't great, and they never use models. This kid, can you believe it? And Gandalf the Gray is just absolutely killing it all the way around. Nice work, Gandalf. Okay, and then Kid B, or sorry, Kid One Hundred, who doesn't exist, is also perfect, right? And Kid B is just, you know, that right or maybe even not that let's say okay so kid b is kind of like he, he or she it's not a real person i'm not sure what i'm assigning it a gender um it, it's okay you know it's fine no model but can do the math you know got the problem solving right but didn't maybe get the bonus part of the problem solving right i don't know what the question was and and didn't use a model or whatever okay so there we go now the next thing i'm going to show you is just for and again a sort of a visual thing but um when you well, let's just do one row when you highlight a row or highlight some data here, you can conditionally format it, okay? And you go format, conditional formatting, and now you can give it colors, which I like to do, okay? And you can choose your own colors, but Google kind of gives you a clue uh, right here, sorry. When you click on default, you get the sort of stoplight colors, okay? And I use those, I just use those, but I like to do blue for two, like blue really kind of pops out for me. Um, so here you go. So there's all kinds of formatting options. So if you miss that, format cells if, Right now it's saying if it's not empty, get, make it green. Okay, I want, obviously want to change that. And since I use numbers, I tend to use this section, okay? So I want to say, now in this option, it's really just two, zero, or one. So I could just use equal to, but if you're going to use like 1.5s and stuff, then you might want to use the greater than things. So let's, let's do that. So if it's greater than or equal to two, I want it to be blue, okay? So I just select, I just like this blue right here. It's my favorite blue, little robin's egg. Mm. So nice. Okay. And so now anytime there's a two there, it's it's going to be blue. And I'm going to add another rule. And I'm going to say that if it's between, um, so I want it to be, you know, less than two, basically. So let's go 1.9. I don't imagine you need to go further than that. 
um, and you know one then I want it to be that green uh, sorry big of the green and then basically I, I, I don't know maybe someone's gonna get a 0.5 or something in here so let's let's do that so if it's you know sort of less than 1.9 and I don't know more than 0.5 then I'm going to make it yellow. Oops, keep clicking the wrong, wrong one there. And then the final rule, if it's less than, oops, 0.5. Okay, and I know this is like kind of cumbersome, but I'm really only going to ever have to do this once, so I'll, I'll show you why in a second. Make it red. Okay. So there's there's my formatting rules now. So if it's big, if it's two or bigger, it's blue. That's like nailed it. Uh, if it's sort of in the ones, then it's green. And if it's sort of in the zeros, but not but not zero, then it's yellow. Okay, and you can obviously you can change those and adjust them. Okay, but it looks pretty good. So I'm just gonna close that this out of the way. And now, uh, as annoying as it was to set up, and you're like, oh my God, I'm gonna have to set this up over again. No, okay, if you click on just one of those cells, because it has the rules, and you use the format painter, this little rolly boy here, click it, and then you go over your cells, and now it, it, it copies that format automatically. Just for fun, let's check a 0.5. Okay, cool. All right, so, no problem and, and you can do the same down here right and you can copy that from cell to cell and like you know if i have another task over here later that i think if i want to do i could do the same thing but that's the gist of it okay all right now count so all we got to do is add up the totals okay so to do that we're going to get let google do the math for us because i don't want to do it so i'm going to say equals sum okay and that's you know the answer when you add you click that and now it's saying okay what do you want to add up okay i just you know, go ahead and grab all these cells because I'm imagining that, you know, this is going to be a longer unit. This is my number sense unit. I'm going to have all kinds of things. I'm just going to drag it down to the end. Okay. And, and let's just drop it there. Okay. And then you can see it's saying, okay, in D2, which is way back where we were, um, is this what you want? And I'm like, yeah. Okay. And you can either add the bracket or, you know, and I'm pretty lazy, so I'm not going to, I'm just going to push enter. And there it is. Okay. Oh, look at Google wanted to do the work for me. Yeah. Thanks, Google. Uh, actually, you know what? Let's not. It, if I click that, it's basically saying, hey, do you want to copy this, what you've done to the bottom, the next two cells? And I actually do, but I'm just going to not for a second. Okay, and let's just make sure this works. So two, three, four, five, six, right? Oh, you know what? I just looked at Bilbo's pro, uh, little work here. Bilbo did use a model for subtracting integers. So, oh man, now I got to change his number and then I got to re-add it all and everything. Oh man, so much work. No, I don't. Yes. Okay, when you change the numbers, in those cells that you are adding, it automatically takes account of that. Okay, so it when I adjusted that one to a two, it added a mark to Bilbo's score, which is cool. But I lied; Bilbo did not use a model, so I'm taking that mark back. Um, okay, and you know if I add if I start adding some numbers down on the end here, um, it'll automatically just account. Okay, which is kind of cool. Um, okay, remember it wanted to autofill, and I said no. This time I am going to autofill. Okay, I, all you well, let me show you that again. Click the cell. Okay, and then I'm not just dragging down like that. Okay, I'm clicking the cell and then I'm grabbing the little box here and I'm boop boop. Okay, and it auto fills for me. You could also, if you wanted to, you could just copy, you know, Control C, and paste it. Okay, and what's cool is Google's automatically changing it. So here I was adding F2 to Z2. Okay, anything that's an F2 to Z2 is being added, and it knew because Google's so smart that when I went to the third row, it it's using the third row. Okay, and then the fourth row, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, and I can do the same thing down here. And there's my kid uh, 100 and kid B. Okay, so we're getting there. All right, we've already built like, you know, a, a fairly useful sheet. And it's pretty easy to imagine copying, pasting stuff now to, you know, add in a new task or add in a test or whatever it is that you want to add in. Okay. Um, now, this part, this whole compare to stuff is going to be a little more complicated. Um, but let's do it. So I want to compare. Let's do compare to A first. So this is comparing to kid, this imaginary kid 100. Okay. And usually the numbers aren't so different. Anyways, whatever. So now we're going to do, have to do a little more complicated math um, because we want to compare this, you know, Bilbo in this case is six to imaginary kid seven and see what kind of a percent we get there. Okay. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to say equals divide. Okay. Or you could do equals quotient if you want to get really fancy, but I never know how to spell it, so I don't bother. So equals divide. And I want to divide um, the total. So in this case, this cell, D2, okay, which is Bilbo's total. So I can just, I can type in D2, by the way, but I'm just going to click on the cell. Okay. And now I'm going to use a comma. You might be thinking, do, do I use a slash or divide symbol or whatever? It, in this, you could just use a comma because it's saying you're going to divide D2, which is the dividend. And now I'm finding the divisor, which is that seven. 
okay? And again, I could just click whoop, down there and push enter, okay? And now I get this big, huge pile of hot garbage, which we're gonna change in a second, okay? But what this is, it's the percent, all right? So it's saying, uh, you know, it's, it's 85 or 86% of the, of the seven, okay? So we can click that and go to format, number, and let's make that an actual percent so it's not so gross. Okay, cool. And now we can just do the same thing as before, right? Right? No. Let's find out what happens if we try it. Oh, that can't be right. How can three be 100% of seven if six is only 86% of seven? And I'm pretty good at math, but I think if you divide seven by seven, you don't get a uh, hashtag, as the kids call it, div slash zero. All right, so something clearly went wrong. Let's find out what. So when I click on this one, okay, well, let's go back up. I want to do D2 by D6. And when I move down a cell, now it's doing D3, which is right, because that's the three, right, D3. But it's it moved it down to D7. So it's not working, okay? So let's delete that. Our problem is we need to lock in this D6. We always want it to be, yes, we want it to be D3 and D4, and if I had another kid, D5, but we want that D6 to be locked in because that's where kid 100 is, okay? Good news, you can lock in that number. And all you have to do here is obviously <laughs> put a money sign, <laughs> okay? So why is it the money sign? I don't know. Where did I learn that? I Googled it at some point and I didn't forget it, but now it's going to lock it in, okay? So now it's saying, okay, divide D2 and I'll, We'll let that change as we pull down and go D3, D4, D5. But the D and the six are locked in for this cell. Okay, let's let's just try it. Make sure it works. Boop, boop, boop. Holla. Okay, so that worked uh, perfectly. Now we don't need to do it for these two because they're not real kids and they don't need a grade or anything. Okay, now we need to compare it to the B. So I'm just going to copy and paste that. Okay, now it's messed it up again because now it's looking at e2 which is a blank cell so it's not working properly so let's change that back to d2 and again this is something i'm going to do once and i'm going to copy and paste this onto all my other units so like it seems kind of annoying but you really set it up at the start of the year and then you're you're laughing okay and instead of d6 because d6 is kid 100 and right now i'm comparing it to b i want to compare it to kid b which is d7 so the d is still locked in wrong joke there and change that to d7 Okay, um, and then I'm going to pull that down too, and there we go. Okay, now this is kind of weird because like these are these numbers are so different. Usually, like in a general task, you know, if if kid if the regular sort of grade was like a four, the bump up might be like a five or a six. Like it's not usually more than double. So like as the unit sort of went on with some new tasks, let's say these you know these were just sort of exit passes or something and the only thing you could do was get a one on them um then you know numbers might change a bit and maybe okay this is a two and this is right like you'll you'll start to see some sort of evening out and just for fun let's do this again so that our colors are pretty okay um and you'll see that the numbers over the course of the unit won't be so you know like there was a 200 percent or something there so now it's kind of evened out a bit okay but as you go through your unit you know more and more tasks will build up hopefully and you can use any sort of assessment you want it could be observation that you just do little check-ins with kids at their desk and you give them a one or two or whatever um or exit passes or you know full-on projects whatever it is if you get a number out of it you put it in here um and it sort of doesn't matter okay and there we go okay so now we've got our our totals we've got our compare to and when it comes time to give this kid an actual grade for this unit or whatever i can say well you know this kid did a pretty good job of meeting uh, the targets of the a they got everything great with the b um so you know you want to give them an a minus i don't it's sort of up to you to to turn that into grade whereas gandalf is sitting at the 91 for me that's like a solid a right and then this kid's clearly a b right i mean they did 100 percent of the b and they, they got no bonus sort of ever i mean that's a perfect example of a b kid right um so yeah i'm trying to think of anything else i wanted to show you i think that sets up sort of the basics now the only sort of danger that i would say becomes a problem with a task like this is let's say i do this and then i do like an old school test where it's like you know 10 questions uh integer questions and whatever Okay. And so I, I keep track of up here. So I say, you know, um, 
use the word worksheet here. I know don't use those anymore, but anyways, worksheet out of 10, right? And so this kid got, you know, the highest you get is 10 and I expected the average to be an eight or whatever, okay? Now, the problem is, is that that's gonna really skew the system, right? Because all of a sudden we had, you know, kids earning 10 and now this worksheet is all of a sudden worth sort of half of the unit basically as you, as you add up the scores here. So I would recommend, well, I mean, doing a worksheet, first of all, anyways, um, if you do have a big task that generates a big number somehow, I would suggest t like paring that number down somehow, right? So instead of giving, you know, if there is a worksheet out of 10 or whatever, or a task that is out of 10, don't make it 10 because it's really gonna like skew the numbers um, and really kind of mess up I mean, a kid was doing pretty well and all of a sudden they did one thing wrong and it's like it was a bad day and it's like killed their whole unit so find a way to turn that those numbers into something else i guess is what i'm trying to say like maybe make it out of two like everything else has kind of been so a perfect score is a two and the average score is maybe 1.5 or something right like maybe you take that 10 and, and divide it or something i don't know okay you take the total and divide it by five and and that's how you get your score so this becomes that. I don't even know what eight divided by five is. Guess what? Google do the work for me. Let's go eight divided by five. Okay, and then what's the seven divided by five? Or seven divided by ten. Am I actually doing this when I know it's okay? Um, what did I do wrong there? I said divided by five and then I divided by ten. Hello. Okay, let's try this again. There we go. Okay, so that's just. My one caution is that if you put in a big number, it's going to sort of um, change your score. Or if you put in like an, you know, a percent here and you put in 87 or something, make sure it's like 0.87 and not 87. Okay. Um, and just sort of be aware of that. Okay. And you can still conditionally format these numbers, et cetera, et cetera. I think that should be good for the basics. The last thing I want to show you here is if you do, oh my God, a kid just moved into the neighborhood and now my whole mark book is, is going to be crazy. No, it's not. Okay, it's going to um, adapt as you make a change. So if you missed what I did there, let me do that again. I just right clicking on um, row four and I'm saying insert row below because my new kid, oh no, come back. My new kid is here and we just had Sauron move in and Sauron is uh, gonna have their scores added. Okay, obviously since it's the, if it's, okay, let's just say they move in at the start of the unit. Okay, there's a new unit and whatever, Sauron's kicking it old school. Okay, and whatever. So there's Sauron, and now Sauron, I'm gonna just bring all these down. I'm gonna highlight those three, I'm gonna drag them down, and there we go. Sauron's on the books, okay? So it's not gonna mess everything up, and it's still, Google Sheets was smart, and it's checking now for the kid B, it's looking at the right cell, D8, and for comparing to kid A, it's looking at the right cell, which was D7. So it did adjust to the fact that I added a row. Even though I locked in the cells, it's smart enough to know that I, I when I added a row, everything sort of changed, okay? Um, and if a kid moves, you just, again, you just delete their row and see you later, Sauron, enjoy Peel or wherever you go, okay? Last thing. So once I've got this set up once, again, it makes your life easy because now I can just go ahead and duplicate the whole sheet and I got a copy of math and I can rename that to health, whatever, okay? So, or you can adapt on the fly. You know, generally I just sort of make the units I need and then, um, and I go from there. So hopefully that was useful. I wonder how long that was. It was way longer than I expected in any case, but you can pause it and play it at your own will or um, do whatever. So there you go, enjoy.